that is a very painful thing to hear. And I think, um, you know, I was talking about before, the thing to keep in mind is what's being communicated when they say that. You know, so reading between the lines. Are they really mad about something? Are they trying to change your mind about something? You know, what's their intention in saying that? I think we need to get clear on that, as clear as we can be. Um, responding to that is tricky because there's a couple things going on. And again, one of the overarching principles that I would think about in that situation is the difference between feelings and behaviors. Saying I hate you is a behavior. It's a speech, right? It's a form of speech, which is a behavior. So the feeling that I hate you is something that I would hold sacred and let them have that feeling. I would be okay with them having the feeling. I personally, as a parent, would not be okay with the expression of that feeling in that way. And so in terms of, you know, it's a two-pronged approach. You have the empathy piece where you're going to try to calm them down by showing you understand that they're upset about something and you get into a discussion about it without kind of a back and forth of pointing fingers. But they're also, I think, especially with young kids, because we're really engaged in creating patterns of communication and habits of relating to each other, that we really want them to be mindful of how they communicate their feelings. How can they learn to behave well in the face of a strong emotion, like intense anger or frustration, which will make them want to say, I hate you. But how can they instead hold that feeling, be okay with having that feeling, know that you don't mind them having the feeling, but that you expect that they will express it differently, okay? And so you could say something like, after the empathy piece, you know, but I'm okay that you feel like that, but you can't talk to me like that. 